folks, and welcome to Garbage Theater, tonight's installment, The Warrior and the Sorceress. I'm your host, Chase, with my co-host, Blake and John. Yellow. Hey. Let's get this shit show on the road. He's got legs, and he knows <laughs> just how to use them. <laughs> who, who knew the thing I was missing in my life was David Carradine's milky thighs? Uh, it's uh just I, splayed I out for the today. world to see. <laughs> this damn movie. Uh, yeah, I wish yeah. I had more to say other than this damn movie, but I slept through most of this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that's it. That's a reasonable reaction, honestly. But you know, uh, like, you know, Chase even asked me earlier today if if I would have a rant or anything. <laughs> And I don't, because like the movie didn't make me mad; it just made me sleepy. Yeah. It's, so it's as like if, I really don't have any complaints about it. It's it, it's kind of as if a five year old went, "Hey, I'm gonna remake Yo Jimbo." <laughs> just like Desert <laughs> Heat. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, if a five year old said, "I would make Desert Heat." Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Let's just start. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, it, it, there's really. It, I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll unpack it all. Um, Good because I need I need some blanks filled in. That's for damn sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's some stuff that I just straight up do not understand. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. I, I mean, I'm. I, I don't have a rant, but I, I've got issues with this uh, magical sword. Sure. Well, okay, so this this movie had a ton of world building that it forgot to do. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, yeah, a ton of world building that all fit inside a, a, a living room. Yeah. <laughs> so, nothing, is, nothing is explained. Like, I don't know what this religion's about. Like, I don't know. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, there's just tons of stuff that just doesn't go explained. Yeah. We'll hit it all as we go. Yeah. So... Let's get cracking on the warrior and the sorceress. We open up to some slow, majestic music, as the captions say, as we look up at the twin sons of Tatooine. <laughs> so well, first, just... of all, first of all, I was feeling the, I was kind of feeling the music. It was okay, like a, I, a little bit reminiscent of like a Morricone score. I was going to say yeah. the exact same thing. The yeah. music was doing it for me. I, I was. It was vi- like. It was kind of fitting because, like, I'm still thinking, like, Kill Bill. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of, you know, which is all throwing just in, like, that, that kind of soundtrack into something yeah. where it doesn't fit. Yeah. Which Does is, that make sense? Yeah. Which well, is kind all... of, I mean, it kind of does because I feel like this movie might be taking more from, like, Fistful of Dollars than from right, Yojimbo. Yes. yes. Um, yeah. So, and yeah, yeah. I mean, and yeah, it was I actually like, was good with it. It was that Western. It, it, spaghetti western music but in a fantasy setting and i liked it yeah uh, yeah so good we're all on the same page we're so far we're like huh not so bad <laughs> <laughs> but just wait oh uh, yeah they, that goes away real quick yeah but this, uh, this two sun thing is the why does it have to be a, why does it to be the only the indication that it, that it's like not earth that uh, other than the the bipedal lizard man i guess so <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that though yeah, we'll get to everything that uh, wasn't but, earthly. Yeah, there's really no reason for it to not have just been Earth in a fantasy setting like Conan, like at all. What was the name of this planet? Uh, uh, Ura, Ur- the sword, Ur- the name, the same name of the sword, Ura. Ura. Yeah. That's stupid. So basically, this is the sword of Earth would be the <laughs> the comparison. <laughs> okay. To the magic sword that they eventually have. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, a barren desert lay before us, and a lone cloaked figure walks into the frame, thighs akimbo. Uh, was David Carradine ever young? No, I don't think so. Was he born a, a 65-year-old man? I think I read he was 48 in this movie. It was just... A, Jesus. It was just a stalemate Benjamin Button. <laughs> you just started old and stayed old. Yeah, came, came out old, stayed old. <laughs> How old? Forty what? Forty eight. I I think I read. And this was what eighty something? Eighty four. Eighty four. Well, Jesus! How old was he when he did Kill Bill? He must have. I mean, he's in his sixties. <laughs> yeah. 
Got 84. This came out after Jedi. And it oh, looked me, like this. Let me double check. It was either 84 or... Yeah, 84. 84. Wow. Wow. That's a low budget piece of crap. I mean, <laughs> and also like, I think this was like a VHS rip or something. I mean, it looked yeah. awful. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, one of my notes is that I wish it was a better quality video. But mm. then the, the sets would probably look even worse. Oh, God. We're gonna get I agree. Out. I just wish it was a better quality movie. Yeah. <laughs> So, as he wanders, several other hooded figures watch on from the nooks and crannies of the canyon. It's Star Wars. It's the, it's the beginning of Star Wars. <laughs> it's Obi-Wan was, Kenobi and the freaking Jawas. I mean... Exactly. I had the whole sand people uh, <laughs> speech in my mind the whole time. <laughs> so, uh, David Carradine, Kane, approaches a settlement as no, a woman... Was, sorry, was he ever named, actually? I, uh... Hmm. No, I don't they call think him, they name they him call, in the movie. They call him the Dark One several times. Yeah, that's it. They might not ever say his name. I don't think they ever say his name. I only know, there's so much stuff that I only know because it was in the description of the movie. <laughs> this is his <laughs> like Man with back. No Name trilogy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they were doing a Man with No Name thing. I also like how I'm sitting there so definitive saying, no, they never said his name when I slept through 80% of this movie. <laughs> I've watched this thing like almost twice, and I don't think he said his name ever. You might not. Um, I, I only knew it because I looked up all the names at the beginning on IMDb, as I want to do now, right. instead of not having names and having to call people uh, 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 Blazer Uzi. <laughs> <laughs> Uzi Blazer is a great name, though. <laughs> so, uh, Kane approaches the settlement as a woman with a baby ask some soldiers hanging around a well for help, and they cut her down in the street. Oh, right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Much to the delight of Cain, who kind of cracks a kind of a smile when this happens. He looks up to see some uh, woman praising the sun just before a man pulls her away. Uh, he approaches the men by the well, and an old man comes running out and waves Cain into his home before a brouhaha breaks out. So... The old man gives Kane some water and introduces himself as the prelate of Yamatar. Why not? Remember that because it's important. It's ex <laughs> so this this uh, uh, country continent is Yamatar city. I think it's the name of the town. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> the town. I don't know. We talk about this town. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna skip ahead a, a, a little bit, but. This whole scenario that's laid out before us where these two castles that are mere feet from each other <laughs> are fighting... It's about the size of a basketball court. They're fighting over yeah. the control of a well. Yeah, the well is in the center ring of the basketball court and each hoop is a goddamn castle. That's the entire set piece of this whole fucking movie. Yeah. And the... Uh, <laughs> the the it prelate of Yamaguchi is over there, like, on the bench. <laughs> like, <laughs> keep him where the scorekeeper stays. They, they might have well just set it in a subdivision, and they're yelling across the street over a manhole in the middle of the street. <laughs> Same thing. Ugh, the whole set piece, yeah, I mean, it couldn't have made it feel smaller. Uh, so, the prelate points out the holy crest on Kane's sword, and uh, Kane says, well, that world that we used to know is dead. And so he's, you know, he's the, the, the tortured uh, loner, like uh, Van Damme and Desert Heat and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and much like that, he takes much delight in all the chaos that he creates. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Uh, so men... Uh, drag out this big steel box around to the well as they get whipped by the soldiers. The prelate points out that Zeg the Tyrant holds the well, and his sworn enemy, Bal Kaz, lives across the street. K Kane wants to know which one of the two houses is stronger as he saunters out with his hair cut to taunt the soldiers. He beckons to one of Balkaz's men to come out, and he tells him to let Balkaz know to watch the well, and that I don't work for cheap. Uh, you're about to work for free, asshole, because nobody asked you to do jack shit yet. <laughs> I don't know. I thought this was kind of a gangster thing to do. <laughs> 
So it was pretty impressive. Yeah, it was pretty gay. He's like, you know, tell your boss to watch this shit, and then tell him <laughs> it's gonna cost. Him. <laughs> so the first hits for free, and then after that, then you're hooked. So Kane walks up to the soldiers, asks for a drink of water. They tell him to go dig for it, like everybody else. And Cain brandishes his thighs in defiance. <laughs> they, they all rush him. Feast your eyes. <laughs> My hairless thighs. Uh, they rush him, and Cain quickly dispatches them by whacking his wooden sword on their backs. He and does. It was like it was like the wooden sword. You could see it in so many of the shots. Yeah, it's like the they had a wooden version, so he could hit people with it. Yeah. He just well, bangs it, it into sharp him. Sharp ass wood sword because he cut that one dude's arm off. One guy's <laughs> arm gets cut off. Okay, yeah. There's a real quick half a second shot of them of him lopping off an arm, but other than to, that, he's just swatting them around. I had to rewind that part like three or four times to figure out what the fuck happened there. <laughs> I mean, it, it it goes by so fast. But there was like no guy behind him, and then. It cuts to this shot, and this guy like stabs another guy, <laughs> and that I don't know. It was it just like the editing didn't work, and I didn't understand what had happened. Oh, make no doubt, this movie is a mess. Yeah, and this I, was the best fight in the movie. Which you're is confused like, as to what building they're in constantly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just ah. Uh, so he he fights them all off. Uh, he looks uh, to Balcaz's castle and gives a little smirk and walks away. The villagers all rush into the well and drink, and one of them yells, Thank you, Dark One! And then the doors... <laughs> we the villagers, thank you! <laughs> <laughs> the, the why, doors... why are all the villagers wearing this, like, leather crotchless underwear on their face? <laughs> yeah, they're, <laughs> they're all wearing jock straps on their faces, and I don't know why. Well, that's more, that's more Balcaz's men. Because the villagers run up first, and they just they just kind of look like the uh, the 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 mud farmers in Holy Grail. Oh just, right, those are the those yeah. are the ones in the robes. Yeah, they, like all went right. to burlappington uh, factory <laughs> burlap or burlapping coat factory. <laughs> so what I don't get was this this uh, quote unquote uh, metropolis that they're <laughs> they're in. This well Mostly is like, yeah, this well is basically topped off with water. There's only 50 people. Yeah, this whole city is like 15 about. guys. So. Like even like whenever they had the two sides come together, each each person had like eight dudes with them. <laughs> the smallest scale. Oh, God. So, yeah. So first the villagers run out. And then Balcaz's men run out, and they're just a bunch of freaks. They're the ones with the, the belts on their faces. Yeah. Uh, they start gathering up buckets of water while a bunch of random women get their tits out and start writhing around. It's like a <laughs> beer commercial, but set in ancient times, and all it took was well water for it to happen. I was like, why, why are there cheerleaders for this, like, water panic? <laughs> <laughs> well, to me, all this was very orchestrated, like they had done it before. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, oh, do they all just sit around waiting to make the little water brigade line and, and bring out the hookers? And like, <laughs> it seemed like it was a common occurrence. Everybody knew their place. Like, it was like a drill. They were ready to go. Yeah. They're like, some dude killed all the guards. Lorraine, get your tits out. Somebody grab the buckets. <laughs> Look, a, a woman couldn't do anything in this movie without having her tits out. Nope. <laughs> no. Absolutely. Like, if there was a woman, woman on appears. camera, her tits are coming oh, yeah. out. Yeah. The, 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 the main. Uh, the, the sorceress they pulled her into the room and said okay we're gonna hire you to play the titular character of the sorceress and when I say titular I mean that literally your tits <laughs> yes. will be out the entire movie <laughs> I hope that's not a problem I mean, and even also woman, even, like, even when your character is freed and has her own wi free will you still yeah. gotta have your tits out yeah well look okay so check this it's out a, it's hot in the desert I guess <laughs> to us all this nudity may seem gratuitous and like exploitative <laughs> and stuff, but to the people of the planet Ura, <laughs> it's the norm, you know. Oh. And I won't sit here in judgment of their culture and the yeah. empowering nudity of the Ur women. How you know, dare we? Point. How dare we uh, uh, judge Planet Deluca? 
<laughs> and their and their customs forced Look, upon them. I was warned that I was going to get shit for this one, but like, <laughs> how was I well, supposed to know that the costume designer was going to like kill herself halfway through making this chick's costume? Well. <laughs> As as soon as the the water strippers came out, like which is only you know two minutes into the movie, yeah. <laughs> like I was just like, damn, John, you just can't get away from it. <laughs> that one it kept coming and kept coming. Like you know, you like you failed as a movie when you're tired of seeing tits. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, this pair again. Like, All right, this is old news now. <laughs> <laughs> oh god so uh, after all the that breaks out over the well a couple of really freakish monsters come scrambling out and run up to Kane uh, thighs spread open for the world to see and <laughs> this part was really funny because like they, they're like crawling on the ground and they run into his foot and then like the camera p- pans up his legs like hey baby <laughs> those legs go all the way like ah <laughs> and he is spread eagle completely. Yeah. Uh, they they invite him to come meet Balkaz, uh, and then when he when they leave, Zeg's men immediately retake the well. <laughs> immediately, yeah, <laughs> like, it's done. the 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 water party's over. Here come the here come the the popo. This is back. the first. This is the first time that Kane does something, and then the status quo is immediately restored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if this is like a what is it? A, is that island in Greenland? Where, what is it? Canada and Norway both claim it, <laughs> and so like the Canadians will have like their flag up, and then the Norwegians come by and kick down the flag and leave schnapps there, <laughs> and they put their own flag up, and then a few weeks later the Canadians come back, kick down their flag, put the Canadian flag back up, and leave whiskey. <laughs> it's like one of those things going on. Yeah. So. Uh, Kane is shown to Balcaz's chambers, where he lays in wait amongst piles of nude women. Uh, Balcaz is he is absolutely ba- balling. Yeah. Balcaz is a big fat guy in a diaper, which for a second distracted me from the fact there's a goddamn puppet lizard laying on him. <laughs> I, I okay. thought it was like a uh, like a lizard he had killed and he was wearing. Yeah. Until it started, like, having conversation with well, him. Yeah, at first, I just thought he just had a big lizard, like, as a pet. But then it starts, like, yeah. you know, it's like his consigliere or some shit. <laughs> it's like, my first thought was the Jabba the Hutt, you know, Jabba yeah. the Hutt and his little rip bat creature thing. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I saw this Salacious lizard sitting crumb, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I did not expect him to take advice from it. Yeah, he he leans over and the whole the thing just starts going. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yes, yes, what a splendid idea, my scaly vizier. <laughs> Good God! So uh, Kane wants payment in gold and terax, whatever the hell that is, and Ball offers two terax and shelter for the rest of his life. Kane says, that's not Two enough. Two Terox, this motherfucker must be crazy. <laughs> Kane says, that's not enough. And then Kermit the Frog chimes in, and <laughs> Balkaz then counters with 25 Terax uh, every eight settings of the sun. It's an arbitrary number, but why not? Uh, it's Kane, eight, eight days is a week on this planet, bro. This planet is stupid. Uh, <laughs> Kane demands 100 Terax, and then Bao pays up after the puppet grumbles in some more. Who's in charge here? <laughs> yeah, for sure. The, the, <laughs> the Gila monster is in charge. <laughs> so uh, Bao tells Kane that they attack at first light and he needs to be ready to lead his troops. So Kane leaves and Bao talks with the lizard some more about his diabolical plan to let Kane kill Zeg. And then he'll kill Kane and get all his Terax back. And I'm fairly <laughs> sure this guy's banging this lizard. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that, uh, <laughs> later on I have a note that I'm like, are they married or something? <laughs> so, uh, Kane overhears all of this, uh, by the way. He's standing in the doorway and gets an, an earful. Back at Zeg's, he calls in for them to bring in the sacred sword and to bring the princess in too so they can put it to the test. 
And she better have her tits out, John yelled from the far side of Ohio. <laughs> uh, and they obliged. That was obeyed. <laughs> so uh, they bring her out and they give Zeg the sword and he raises it up and he brings it down on a rock and it breaks in two immediately. And then he grabs the princess and is like, I'll kill you for that, you stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Then I got a good chuckle when the sword broke for some reason. So did, I laughed out loud. It was okay, it was hilarious to me that it just broke immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so it's revealed that she makes the swords, and she's supposed to be making the sacred sword of Yura, but she keeps making these trash ones. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the bullshit master sword that you find in the Lost Woods. Yeah. Uh, he gives her one last chance to make it right, or he's going to send her to the slavers. Uh, you know, and you, not knowing a whole lot about metallurgy, but I can't say that having your tits flopping around while you're banging away at molten steel can't be the most efficient way of smithing. No. no. I mean, give her <laughs> I, something. I, I, to, to the, you know, to defend the movie a little bit, I don't think her role is actually making the sword itself. No, her role is absolutely nothing. Well, I think she's just supposed to put some kind of crazy, like... I don't know, hex or magic well, bullshit on it. We'll use the technical sword. term and call it juju. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, where was it? So, yeah. Uh, then Zeg's captain, uh, Keef, Captain Keef, comes in. <laughs> and Chief Keef. <laughs> <laughs> and he gives him uh, the challenge that was sent by Balkaz. And Zeg commands Keef to be ready to kill the Dark One come morning, and he sends the princess away in chains. And they always, she's never called the sorceress, ever. She's the princess. She should have been the warrior and the princess. Uh, yeah. She should have been the Dark One and the princess. <laughs> so. Uh, so both these dudes, uh, Zeg and, and Keef, have been in stuff. Uh, okay. The guy that plays Keef was in um, Masters of the Universe. He was Blade. Oh, shit. Yeah, dude. And I think he did like the, all the choreography in this thing. Yeah, he, he was he was Swordmaster on Masters of the Universe. Yeah. Not a huge claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> when, whenever it, was, egg, whenever it was time for Frank Langella to sword fight Dolph Lundgren with that 80-pound uh, helmet on, they swapped in this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, quick side note, they're uh, making a Netflix uh, series for Master Universe. Yeah, I they, saw that, and they called it like an original anime, Yeah, which is like, <laughs> word? I'll give it a chance. I mean, they've yeah, been trying sure, Smith, sure, sure. Kevin Smith's the one running it, too. That's cool. I mean, they've been, <laughs> try, I mean, they've been trying to get the live-action movie off the ground for, what, 35 years? Yeah, I think that's, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> this is before the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll I'll do like I do with most of the other rehashed uh, Netflix remakes of old cartoons. I'll watch three episodes. Yeah, and say ah, oh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I've been meaning to watch the Shira one, but I haven't I haven't tried it yet. No. Voltron's okay. Oh yeah, yeah, Voltron's good. I've watched most of that. Yeah. Okay, we're, anyway. we're way off topic now. Okay. <laughs> oh, and, uh, and Zeg, <laughs> <laughs> the guy that played Zeg, Luke Askew, Luke Askew was in like he was in Cool Hand Luke. And uh, Easy Rider. Well, yeah, he was Luke Askew. <laughs> he was cool Luke. Luke Askew. And like Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. He's been some good stuff before. Well, there you go. And now he's in this. So yeah. what does yes. that say about his choices? The end of his career. <laughs> so, uh, meanwhile, Kane is being bathed by a variety of naked women. <laughs> 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 that's that's all the detail I'm going to give there. I was about to say, explain. <laughs> you know, there's one. <laughs> it's a plethora. There's one thick girl there in case he likes a little bit of meat. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, it seems to go on until the next morning. Uh, they blow the morning horns, and Bal's men carry him out on a big dirty couch. To meet Zeg's man on the battlefield. Did you, did this you guys can... notice? Did you notice that the lizard had a little sword? Oh, no, come on, no. <laughs> he had his own little sword. 
Shut up. <laughs> I swear to God, I had to rewind it. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and see that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like he had one of those little sandwich swords. <laughs> I just realized what you were talking about. <laughs> oh my god. It was awesome. All of sticking off the end of it. No, I didn't <laughs> notice that. It was awesome. Oh my god. Oh man. There was a brief a brief second when I saw the lizard with a little sword that I was like, is this movie great? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, they haul him out on this big couch to meet Zegsman on the field of battle. And again, the scale of this conflict is so small. Uh, two <laughs> high school football teams rivalry is grander in scale than this entire movie. <laughs> <It's> totally accurate. <laughs> so, uh, Kane appears amongst Bao's men and Bao calls out to Zeg that today is his last. And he sends Kane out to attack first and Kane kind of saunters out. And then he looks back and declares that he won't fight for anyone that plots against him and wanders off to the sidelines. So Bao decides he's going to attack anyway, and his men rush Zegs. And Zeg gives the order and his men draw their swords, which causes Bao and his entire army to shudder with fear as they didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> so <laughs> Bao, I didn't know they were going to have swords. <laughs> So they charge anyway as Kane looks on laughing and they just kind of stand like a foot away from each other, just screaming at each other for several minutes until <laughs> what a, a, sca- what a bunch of pussies, man. Like not one of these guys is willing to die for no reason. No, no one's going to, no one's fighting. They're just in there. Uh, 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 so. <laughs> then a scout yells out, the slavers are coming. And then the, both the armies are like, oh, oh, we better call a truce. And they run away. This movie is stupid. <sighs> so It is stupid. And this is, this is. is time number two where <laughs> Kane does a thing and then everything just goes <laughs> back to the status quo. Yeah. What I didn't get was this is supposed to be two warring factions. And like you said, everybody's hesitant to fight. And then, like, when the one badass in the movie shows up, they're like, uh, truce? <laughs> like, but he isn't even part of, like, the suburb. Like, he's not even in the cul-de-sac. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this movie needs to be remade that just takes place in, like, a little subdivision somewhere. And it's just two <laughs> redneck families. <laughs> but, but there has to be a lizard with a sword. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please, God. One of the families just has a big iguana that they tape a knife to. (laughs) Wait, it's John's neighborhood. It's it's old Chompsley. (laughs) The fucking dog's got a sword. (laughs) Oh, shit. Oh god! It might as well be my family versus that family at the end of the street. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm getting at. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, later, uh, the slavers come by and they're plying their trade, and they communicate mostly by going ah. <laughs> it's effective though. <laughs> they're not human, so here's another little nod that this is another planet. Still unnecessary though. Yeah. It didn't uh, add anything. No. <laughs> they they look like those uh those people from the second Ewoks movie. <laughs> and and like the quality of the video in this was so bad, I wasn't even sure that they were supposed to be like creatures or whatever. Yeah. I thought maybe they're just wearing some kind of weird mask or something. I yeah. Know. I thought that they were just wearing some weird mask, but I was half asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh this is where Bao sets up a plot where the the slavers are going to be given these poison, poison gourds of water that bear Zeg's crest in hopes that they'll uh, give him a large army enough to wipe out Zeg's men as revenge. He's going he's gonna to frame him. So Kane watches on as all the slavers drink the water and collapse dead on the ground, except for the lead slaver who vows to avenge his warriors and rides off into the night screaming like a maniac. <laughs> I love this. He's like... <laughs> he's just riding away. <laughs> <laughs> just on his, he's off his... 
on his uh, carriage, like riding away, just screaming. <laughs> I mean, it's another planet. That's how they do <laughs> stealth in Ura or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, the two lunatics of Bal's little court uh, come running out, and but they're frightened off by Cain, and he scales the walls of Zeg's compound as Zeg sits there counting out his gold. He comes in and I don't know what he's doing here. He's like taking his neatly stacked money and <laughs> counting it out into a messy pile. Well, yeah. I mean, like, it's how a different you planet. planet. How do you count your terax? <laughs> it's count, a different planet. That's how you count gold money on that planet. Over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't, you don't roll them up. You throw them in a big heap. Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's you can't expect all rules. the physics to be the same. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Kane offers to sell Zeg information. Uh, Zeg pays him, and he tells him that he tells him about Bal's plan about the gourds and whatnot. Uh, Zeg asks Cain to bring him the gourds of poison water as proof, but Cain refuses. He says it's too dangerous. I don't know why it's too dangerous to just lay it out there amongst all the dead people. Yeah, why didn't also, he just why is he even trusting him? <laughs> you got me. <laughs> like, I may not have been conscious, but even I was like, didn't he kill his people before? And yeah. they're just going to let him walk yeah. in there and tell him some bullshit story about some water? Mm-hmm. That's it. He pretty much has just, like, free reign to, like, roam around any of these places. Yeah. And why would they drink the water from these suspicious jugs when there's a whole well full of water ten feet away? Well, it's being guarded by three guys. This is not worth the trouble. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. So, they were already out of the town by then. Yeah. So, Zeg sends his troops out instead, and uh, Kane sneaks away. But he sneaks, he sneaks into the dungeon, I guess. And that's where uh, the princess, uh, Naja, is being kept. Yeah, he can just he, accidentally, like, walk into this chick's cell. Yeah. Uh, and she tells him to... Real quick, though, did she have a shirt on? Nope. Oh, okay, just being sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, was, she has this one thing that sort of goes around her shoulders. She's got a roll of toilet paper hanging around her shoulders. Yeah. And yeah. A but G string. And that's it. She doesn't it. have it on when he finds her. And I'm like, oh no, she's naked. <laughs> <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to <laughs> intrude while you were undressed. So this will be awkward for the next 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, He's the, he comes in and uh, Naja tells him to take the prelate and escape from Yamatar tonight. And and if, don't worry, I'll keep your identity s secret. And she calls she calls him what the the Haramak or something. Yeah, the Homerak. She called him something. I don't remember. Don't worry, Homerak. Homerak I'll keep your identity secret. And it's like o okay. Are you going to explain any of this? It means holy no. warrior. It, 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 bullshit. The prelate said it earlier. When? When they first when they first met, when he first brought him into the uh the temple or whatever. You are lying. Yeah. This movie I've gave no information. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and call this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this movie just started throwing out titles to some bullshit religion that it never explained. <laughs> no, I mean it never get that's it. That's the yeah. the totality of the information that I have, but the only explanation she gave him when he he's like, "Hey, what's a homerack?" She's like, "Have you seen my tits?" <laughs> <laughs> Got a homerack going on in explained. my pants right now. <laughs> Why do we have two sons here? Uh, have you seen these? <laughs> I got two of these. Yeah, only two though. Only two. Not like <laughs> two. Are the are the are the slavers wearing masks or are they actual creatures? Maybe this will clear it up. <laughs> so uh, he inspects her hand to find a star-shaped scar on her palm. Okay, gross. To no significance. Uh, I think it was the same symbol that's like on his sword and that okay. was in the temple earlier. The the symbols don't match anywhere. The symbol on the sword did not match the symbol on the wall. It did. It kind did. of. Sort of. Not really. It was this close is, enough that I knew it was This is a half-ass religion. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you don't go into a, church, a, a Christian church and there's a big cross on the wall and it's not at a 90 degree angle. 
Right. It's a little off. <laughs> what about one of those like weird uh like orthodox ones where there's like another line in there? It's like that diagonal shit. You're like, those don't count. Thing? <laughs> so uh she asked him to save the prelate and she says that uh why hasn't the Catholic Church redesigned their logo? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this. Let's crack open this. I I'm just saying like yeah, they're going to rebrand like, rebrand for sure. Yeah, bring yeah, bring in Buddy Christ. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean <laughs> That, no, sh- shut up, please. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. So she asks him to save the prelate, and she says that she will never make Zed the sword of Yura. Uh, just then, a guard enters the dungeon, and Kane just up and kills him. Let's start killing Zeg's men again. Uh, he frees the princess and tosses a couple more guards around, which kills them. Uh... Uh, he dude, takes, this was like the laziest fight scene. <laughs> yeah. It's he awful. just kind of shoves them into the walls and they die. He takes the princess and dodges guards as they make their way through the compound. And they climb down the walls and he sends her off on her naked way to go hide with the prelate. He gives her his cloak to cover her up just long enough to get to the wall. And then he takes it back. <laughs> well, Yeah. <laughs> This was naked to ass borrow. Out <laughs> I wonder if, like, in this topsy turvy world, like, to cover yourself is to be like indecent. <laughs> that's what. I, yeah, that's what I'm talking. That's about, why he's dude. got them thighs out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So maybe man's man's get their thighs out. <laughs> yeah. Women are practically naked. That's the balance. Yeah. <laughs> So, but then the dude, like, okay, all the dudes on, uh, what is it, Zeg's side, they all had, like, the, the dirty Spaceballs uniforms on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those white jumpsuits. Yeah. And, but then, like, the, the women have nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On either side of this conflict. Yeah. Strange. <sighs> so, Kane then sneaks into Bao's compound and knocks out Kermit the Frog. You know what he kind of looks like is a, a like a, a Skeksy. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, not nearly as cool. Speaking of which, have you seen the trailer for the Dark Crystal series? No, I haven't watched yes. it yet. Holy shit, that's going to be amazing. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Anyway, anyway. Not as good as Voltron. <laughs> <laughs> might not be. Voltron was legit, man. I, yeah. I'm with you. Anyway, back on track. Uh, he, brings, he brings the lizard to Zeg. And asks for a thousand Terax for it. And Zeg happily Jesus paid. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> How many cycles I got to pay that debt off? <laughs> so he happily pays him and asks Kane to join him. Uh, but Kane refuses. He's going to keep playing both sides. The next morning, Bal and Zeg meet on the battlefield again. And Kane and the prelate are looking on from the sidelines. And Zeg hauls out Kermit, which is now a bipedal humanoid lizard man. He threatens to kill it if Bao doesn't leave the village. And then Bao drags out the princess that he has now. Damn, and I missed all of this shit. I don't know if I missed something or what, but I, I guess she didn't make it to the prelate. Did we yeah. see that? No. No, he just has her. Couldn't couldn't the prelate have told Kane before as they were strolling out to the battlefield to watch this uh, uh, junior league football game play out <laughs> that hey yeah i sent the, the the princess to you last night did she show up no oh shit that never happened uh, yeah i don't even know i mean i almost thought it was part of the plan but i was questioning that too but it's it's clearly not when it, once it plays out i guess because this is instance number <laughs> three where the status quo <laughs> remains unchanged I'm more pissed off that I missed the whole bipedal lizard. <laughs> yeah, it, it comes yeah, sauntering walks, out, and it's got like a little dress feet. on. <laughs> what? It's I wearing, it. It's wearing clothes. Oh, so uh, Bal drags out the princess that he's taking pr- prisoner, and, uh, 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 and <laughs> I was thinking, this poor woman, she's got to to be acting bare ass naked the whole movie, opposite a fucking muppet. <laughs> This has got to be the lowest point of her career. 
And like uh, they even put on they put a burlap burlap bag over her. But yeah. like her titties still found their way out of that thing. Like <laughs> it's like her body just rejects clothing <laughs> like a <laughs> transplant. So uh Bal and Zeg decide to make a trade. So they trade them, the lizard for the princess. So what was <laughs> the fucking the point of begin? any of that? <laughs> What was the point of any of that? Nothing. <laughs> Up to now, nothing that happened in the movie mattered. <laughs> no. Nothing. None of it did anything. I guess it's heightening <laughs> it's heightening the tensions between the two. God damn it. So Kane rushes the prelate uh, into his house and stuffs him into the fireplace for safekeeping. Uh, <laughs> Zeg orders his men to go find the prelate. So they search his home and find nothing. Uh, Keith offers a gourd of water to the soldier that finds the prelate and orders them to go search the village. So down in the, the sub-basement, the prelate tells Cain that the secret passageway that they're hiding in connects to the well. So Cain pokes a hole in the wall and the water starts draining into the open cavern. He says, oh, that'll, that'll oh, cause some fun that's later. that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up and it was dried up, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" Yeah, Kane did it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, now yeah. everyone's gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way to go. Like, that, that'll cause some fun. Now they'll both think that the uh, the the well's gone dry, and there's no. I water. thought that that it just naturally went dry. Yeah. <laughs> there's no way it ever could. The the well was <laughs> the well was. I know, full it was to the top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never seen believe me i was well. con- i was confused but then i was you know all of a sudden i was woke up again by my own snores <laughs> it was full to the top but they never uh it, it never rains there we never see any kind of rain they're constantly yeah, stagnant water they're constantly dr- <laughs> drinking from it and writhing around in it it can't be clean water <laughs> putting their dirty little mitts in there <laughs> Dirty little jock-strapped faces. Jesus, <laughs> I've just never seen a well where the where the, t- the surface of the water is above ground level. Yeah. <laughs> Last guy that washed his face in there got double barrel pink eye. <laughs> All those skanks uh, dancing in it. Yeah. Yep. So uh, that night in Zeg's compound, uh, they're having some sort of uh, sparring competition with Keith. And this is Keith is just kicking everyone's ass in there. (laughs) (laughs) And like, and Zed's just in there, like, watching morosely. (laughs) Yeah, because he's seen it all before. This bores me. (laughs) We we do this every other night. Oh, Oh, so boring. Somebody bring me a naked bra to drown. I just kind of feel bad for That was grim. That was real grim. Yeah. This is where Kane offers his sword to Zeg. And so they drag out another poor naked woman and throw her into a giant tank of water and just watch her drown. And that's Uh, that's what happens. Jesus Christ. Like you do. And Kane could give a shit. Yeah. That was wild. That was wild. He's like... uh, all this bloodshed's boring. What's on the <laughs> Drowning Lady channel? <laughs> and he, he asked Kane, you, uh, you think she should live or die? And Kane's like, well, I don't know. You're the boss. Yeah. <laughs> Way to take it. a stand there, Chief. <laughs> what a hero. <laughs> I'm about to say, here's your hero, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So uh, Kane offers his service for another 400 Terax. You just got a thousand for for uh, uh, the Muppet over there. You you kind of lowballing him now. Uh, he, <laughs> he says that he'll he will uh, stay there, but he wants to inspect the compounds for defenses so that he feels safe. Which insults Keith because he's the captain of the guard. So some random guard takes Kane on a tour of the compound and shows him where the princess is being kept, and he says that she's being guarded by the protector which is an awful kind of creature. So Kane just kind of sticks his head in the room and sees her chained up to the wall and formulates the brilliant plan of sticking his head back out the room and saying, oh, hey, she escaped. You better go get a guard. And it works. (laughs) (laughs) 
Those yeah, yeah, like, she's not in here. What? <laughs> what? So, oh, shoot. <laughs> so the guard runs to go tell everybody that she escaped. Kane goes into the room. He frees Naja and tells her to go back to the prelate and actually get to him this time. <laughs> Uh, just then, a swarm of tentacles erupt from the ground everywhere and wrap up Kane. Uh, Naja flees as it drags Kane towards its big mouth, and Kane takes a sword and stabs it in the lips, face, head. <laughs> Who can say? But it kills it instantly. What's now? From my perspective, I heard him say that she's in there with the protector, some kind of creature, and then I never saw anything again. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I guess they never showed what the protector was. Yeah. It was a tentacle did. monster. They sure did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which, which is killed quite easily. Mm. So, Zeg and his men arrive, and Kane plays it off as uh, Zeg sends some men to search for Naja. The prelate finds Naja and takes her to safety. So, she finally made it. Doesn't put any clothes on her or anything. Uh, <laughs> well, no, that'd be gross. <laughs> So, back at the compound, Keith is questioning the guard that let Kane into the prison, and he tells Zeg that he uh, he knows that Kane. He, he goes and finds Zeg after he questions him, and he tells him that he knows that Kane killed the prote- the protector and freed Naja. So the next day, during their sad little meal that they have every day, uh, Keith kills a servant for going for some food scraps that he threw on the ground, and then he appears to feed them to the other servants. <laughs> <laughs> so well it's already been touched by servant yeah. <laughs> so uh, Zeg then says that he ordered some special entertainment in honor of his new sword and <laughs> fuck uh, like, oh fuck yes special entertainment you just yeah. know that means a chick with four titties is coming <laughs> John could smell him coming <laughs> I was, look. What's that? I was dozing at this point. And when I saw the chick come out with like the, whatever, she she was covered up. Yeah. And I remember I was laying there and I said, oh, here we go. I guess her tits are going to come out. Holy shit, that's four of them. Yep. It's quad rack. (laughs) I didn't know that Ura had uh, troubles with cheap domes. Uh, the, you got one extra one in this movie, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, the, the extra ones look just as shitty. And I, But then I was sitting there wondering, okay, like, if you're going to have extra tits. The third one in Total Recall, I never liked that because it was just in a weird spot. <laughs> yeah, But this agreed. was just like, it, this was just like if a, if a cat had tits. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, yeah, it was kind of disgusting. Yes, <laughs> it was gross. It was like, it was so, like a cow udder. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, but uh, that yeah. was—it was actually in the trivia on IMDb. Some <laughs> idiot was like, "It's actually uh, biologically correct because like that's where they would be." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> dumbass! God damn it! IMDb. Yeah, this whole thing. Anyway, I thought the prosthetics looked pretty good, actually. Well, I, you of the three of us did the most research, I'm sure. Yeah. You How many times did good. you watch that scene? <laughs> <laughs> if you went back looking for the, the little lizard sword. <laughs> well, because I, I caught a glimpse of the sword. I was like, wait, was it lizard holding that? You caught a glimpse of something else in this scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. And then, okay, but then I was really thinking, like, okay, if this is another planet, like, I'm going I'm to I'm buy into this. This is another planet where women with four tits exist. Why is she the only one? That's what I'm talking about. I was like, are four boobs on this planet weird? Like, are people watching this like, ooh, this is hot? Or is it well, just like they can't well, look he, away? He had she to, had to be something special because she was the special entertainer. Yeah, he had to send away for this special. So, yeah. But, but she this was special a, for another reason, though. <laughs> was she? Yes. Yeah. So, I didn't know this. Yeah. So... Because this is, honestly, this is the last thing I remember from the movie. Yeah. So, after this, I'm done. <laughs> So, I woke up and like like Amazon had already started a screensaver on me. <laughs> Good God! So yeah, this woman comes out and she's she's dancing around and she climbs up on the table in front of Kane. When uh, I hope John, I hope you can help explain what happens here. 
Because oh, something, you know something shoots out of her at Kane. Does yeah, she have a that, stinger? That pussy snake got him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, for real? <laughs> no way. I'm about to watch this movie. Vagina attack. It happens so fast. <laughs> I gotta say, for people who are listening to us, like if I was one of our listeners here and us described as movie, I'd be going right out and watching. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound awesome. It does. <laughs> I mean, I, I I rewound this part because I didn't know what happened, and even after I rewound it, I still couldn't tell what was happening. Well, John just told you, pussy snake. I mean, pretty simple. What it sounds like to yeah, me. Dude. It's remember, like this. Remember in um in the Kurosawa classic Yojimbo. <laughs> when uh, acclaimed actor Toshiro Mifune was bitten by the vagina viper of a woman with Yan Chikubi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. oh, shit. It came back. Oh, my God. <laughs> The fact that he could rattle that off without laughing. I know. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it it looked like a back scratcher. You shot out of her and hit him <laughs> nice. in, the ch- in the chest. And, oh my god, I'm, I'm dizzy. Wait, can we call it a, a back snatcher? <laughs> so... He, he grabs her around the throat and he starts to strangle her, but it's no use and he slowly passes out, conveniently face down into her mountain of tits. <laughs> so, <laughs> later, uh, the guards and Keefe are beating the crap out of Kane and questioning him about nausea, and he won't answer. And then Keefe's called away, and while he's away, Kane takes this chance to crawl away as uh, they're finding out that the well is dry and the distraction has come into play. So Keith returns to find Kane gone, so they all run out to look for him, and he, he rolls out of his little hiding place, and while the guards are distracted, he makes his way and uh, crawls underneath the water cart. And I can't about- believe how easy it was for him to escape. <laughs> he's, he's just dragging his limp-ass body all over the compound. There's people everywhere, and nobody sees him. That's ridiculous. He crawls up under the water cart because they're going to send it out to try to get whatever's left of the the water. And Kane starts to search the cart first, but then Zagor said, "No, it's you got to go now, right now." And so they send it out, and he escapes. So outside, Kane scurries away, and he's found by the villagers. They bring him to Naja, who is now free and still topless by her own choice. <laughs> so. Zeg sends a man down into the well to investigate, and that's when Ball's men rush the well. And the soldier comes up, and he says that the well's almost dry, which causes an all-out brawl amongst the two armies. They're actually finally, uh, quote-unquote, fighting now. <laughs> As sort of. you, if you really looked in on some of the sword play in this scene. It's, it sucked. It was just kind of, <laughs> it's eh, eh, eh. So, uh, the villagers all amass along the sidelines as the two armies fight, and Bal tells his men to stop fighting as he notices the villagers surrounding him, and he calls for an alliance with Zeg so that they can hold the well from the villagers. And Zeg takes this opportunity to knife Bal and take control of both armies. Damn. So, there you go. Very nice. (laughs) Interesting. Uh, Meanwhile, Naja forges the Sword of Yura, or at least watches it get forged by some guy. Oh, wait, I did like see I said, this. I don't think she for- She just does a sorcery thing on it. She stands around is what she does. She did nothing but stare. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I did see the sword part, so I, I, was, I was wrong. Yeah. I, I saw him swing the sword. Uh, so the next day, the standoff continues. Uh, the villagers are randomly rushing the well but they're easily repelled as they have no weapons and the soldiers do. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if they just kill all of the villagers, like, who are they going to rule over? Like, what is this all about? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the end game of this little town. 
Uh, so the villagers continue to randomly assault the well until the slavers show back up and they uh, rush in and take the well and they kill Zeg. So Kane awakens to find Nausea waiting for him to give him the sword of Yura. Uh, she, t- she tells him to take the sword and strike the anvil, which he does, and the sword slices it clean in two. Whew, and he holds the sword up. A motherfucker. Holds the sword up to the cheers of all the villagers. Uh, <laughs> back in the village, the wouldn't sl- it be funny if they found out that like this really was just some cul-de-sac in some random neighborhood, <laughs> but like the power had been out for like two weeks, and this is what happened. It's just like uh, it's just like the village. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at the end. <laughs> it just descended into madness within a week, and they had this whole culture built up around a well. <laughs> what happens when the Wi-Fi goes out? Yep, that's it. <laughs> Two factions battling over the router. <laughs> <laughs> so back in the village, the slavers are tormenting the villagers. Uh, they find the prelate and in the well, and they haul him out, and they tie him up and put him with Keith and the other prisoners. Uh, just then, Cain appears, and the, soul, the the slavers rush him, and he kills about a dozen of them just using throwing knives. Uh, <laughs> Naja and the rest of the villagers all rush in to join Cain. Uh, Burgo, the lead uh, slaver, sends his men forward, but they're all easily killed by, by Cain. Thighs glistening in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> this scene right here... This needed to be much gorier. Oh, yeah. like again, he's just slapping them with a sword. Dude, they just they just demonstrated that this fucking thing can cut straight through an anvil and the stone that it's on. Yeah. Like, can you imagine how cool it would have been if like just the hype factor would have been like top notch if the, he was just shredding dudes like this limbs is a- flying all over the place yeah. and getting chopped in half and it would have been great. This is all playing into my problem with this sword, and we're we're about to dive into it right here. So, uh, they, at this point, they're, they're all fighting. Keith gets free, and he rushes Kane with, his, with the remaining Zeg soldiers, and he manages to disarm Kane, and Keith gets the Sword of Yura. Right. So, this is game over, right? Yeah. He has this Kane's magical fucked. end-all, be-all sword. It's over. They built up the sword to be, like, to give, like, it's like the Sword of Grayskull. He has the sword. He's going to be unstoppable and he's going to go in and and just kick ass. So Keith's got it now, but Keith has it and Kane fends him off with just some bullshit random sword he gets from some dead guard. We just saw this sword cut an anvil in half. Yeah, he's just blocking it with the blade of some piece of junk. So this sword is bullshit. Maybe it's like Dumbo's magic feather. (laughs) (laughs) Of all fucking things. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So It's like yeah. the magic or the magic slippers. She didn't need them. Yeah. No. Uh, so Oh wait, yes she did. <laughs> Never mind. Everybody remembers when those <laughs> naked crows made that feather for Dumbo. <laughs> <laughs> so uh as they fight, Kane manages to get the sword back from Keith by just kind of grabbing it and pulling it away from him. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> uh, the villagers all manage to he he kills he kills Kane. Uh, I mean, he kills Keith. The villagers all manage to kill the rest of the slavers, and they start hauling the bodies away. Kane throws his tear axe over his shoulder, like at the end of Good, Bad, and the Ugly. And he bids bids Naja and her boobs farewell. They they do <laughs> their girls. they do their stupid secret handshake that we're seeing for the first time, and he saunters off into the sunset. Well, out a doorway at least. Thank Roll God. the goddamn credits. <laughs> Thank God Kane showed up, or all these people would still be alive. <laughs> Like he's stepping over piles of villager corpses on his way out of town, and an honest to god subtitle came on announcing the stirring heroic music. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and that's that. That's the warrior and the sorceress. 
<laughs> what a goddamn mess. <laughs> Not the worst thing we've ever seen. But... Honestly, I probably would have enjoyed it a lot. Like I was just I was just really tired. <laughs> but when I was awake, I was digging it. I, now, I, and again, I like the music that it was playing when he was leaving. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The, the stirring heroic good. one? Yes. It was good. <laughs> yeah. So for what, I, what I'm he hearing is, it. <laughs> if the movie would have been him walking to the place and then walking away from the place, nothing in between, it would have been a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what he did there. I guess we'll never know. Yeah. He, walked, he walked up, he just kind of peeked over the fence, he saw this yard with these two groups of insane assholes. One of them's got a lizard with a spork. And he just said, yeah, nah, nah. And just yeah, kept going. Not worth it. He's like, I oh, forget it. That baseball's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just come over and knock on the door? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Vagina vipers. <laughs> Oh, All right, man. so that's done. Uh, let's do the questions. I'm frightened. Um, Believe me, you got more than I got. Believe me. I don't know about all that. Uh, I went back. I got the actual score for tonight. John okay. is in the lead with seven. Oh, with hell Blake, yeah. With Blake behind by one with six, and I'm right behind Blake with five. So still anybody's game. Fantastic. So let's see if we can tip the scales with the questions to this nonsense. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, finding questions for this was tough, man. Let me tell you. So Finding things that I thought would be questions was tough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. You guys all set? Good. Yep. Ready to go. Okay. Um, what is hanging from the walls of Balkaz's fortress? What the fuck? Hmm. Um, how many men does Keith take with him to search the temple? It wasn't a counting thing. He says it. Well, there's not but 30 men in the entire town. So. <laughs> um, how many men does Cain say it would have taken to defeat the protector? Was the lizard male or female? Ooh, this, this, is, that's a Ooh. tricksy one. Because I know what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, um, in the very first fight, the first time we see Kane throw back his poncho, how many mm-hmm. throwing knives does he have strapped to him? Like his entire body? Yeah. All right. I got my guesses ready. (laughs) All right. right. Uh, Question one. What is hanging from the walls of Balkaz's fortress? I said skeletons. I said furs. I have bodies slash skeletons. So Blake, Blake gets one. Uh, how many men does Keith take with him to search the temple? Four. Ten. Ooh, ten. Ten is the answer. <laughs> Incredible nice. guess. Shot in the dark. Um, uh, was it? Uh, how many men does Cain, Cain say it would take to defeat the Protector? Seven. Twenty. It was twenty. That's the one I knew. <laughs> uh, is the lizard male or female? Female. I'm going to say female. It was male. Oh, God, oh, it was uh, the obvious answer. <laughs> Zeg refers to it as he. Like, I wanted to say it was male, but I said, no. Nah. I figured the only reason he'd ask the question, you know. But... <laughs> oh, well. That's Blake style. Blake style questions. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and how many throwing knives does Kane have? Three. Five. Four. As well. oh, Damn. Oh. Not too bad, though. One for Blake, two for Chase. Yeah, not Guess bad. Guess what, gentlemen? 
we're all tied up. <laughs> <laughs> None Every of this is pointless <laughs> up till now. <laughs> oh God man, I love this season. <laughs> On that sour note, <laughs> it's time for coming at trashins. Uh, it, tonight's Blake's pick is something gonna happen. I don't know. I hope not. I need to appeal to to John. I have a. It's someone requested a movie. I, we use that I, up. There's a rule I know, now. I know. I'm just appealing to his sensibility, Chase. Can you shut your mouth while I explain? <laughs> Thank you. And the person who suggested a movie is my dear old wife. Oh. And you know it's this our is anniversary low. this weekend. This is oh low. My God. Twenty-five years, John. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Twenty-five years, and she she wanted me to pick a movie. I know for a fact Be- Becca does not listen to this bullshit. Uh, <laughs> she has started. <laughs> Actually, the uh, the Ura having uh, cheap domes joke came from her. <laughs> I'll go ahead and give her credit for it. So the movie she wanted to watch. Mm-hmm is a little gem from 1990 called Frankenhooker. Oh, Lord. Uh, I know what this is. I've never seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) The info on it is, in this horror comedy, the gruesome death of his girlfriend Elizabeth in a lawnmower accident inspires hobby scientist Jeff Franken to reassemble her using (laughs) Elizabeth's head and a variety of body parts he has harvested from a group of attractive New York City prostitutes. A convenient thunderstorm gets the experiment underway as Frankenhooker is set to roam the streets of New York. And uh, it actually had a high uh, high rating on Rotten Tomatoes, I think just because of what it is, you know? Mm-hmm. So I just used my better judgment. And uh, there's only one funny, kind of funny review, and uh, it was... It's just like a car wreck. That was the only one I found. All the other ones were just talking about how it was supposed to be some sort of comedy, but they just destroyed it and it didn't <laughs> didn't land the way it was supposed to. So go ahead and get rid of it, John, and is ruin my anniversary. Is- <laughs> John? John? Yeah. John? Yes? Fateful Findings is gone forever. No, it isn't. It's gone forever. It's no, off. it isn't. It's off of streaming. No, it's coming and back though. And, and whose fault is that? I heard that it's coming back. From who? Neil Breen himself? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he called me. Oh man. Twenty five years. Just like twenty five years. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. It actually is. <laughs> what? I'll vouch for that, yeah. Yeah. Jeez. I've been with it since I was twelve. That's incredible. I know, and then you're gonna destroy it? Don't do that, John. Don't be that guy. Does she really care that much about Frankenhooker? Let me tell you why she cares. I'm glad you asked, John. (laughs) (laughs) When we were kids, we used to go to the video store. Mm -hmm. So so he'd go make out in the back aisle. And one of the boxes there was Frankenhooker. And it had a button on the box. And when you pressed it, the little Frankenhooker said, What a date! And we thought it was fucking hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) So... That's why she wants to watch the movie. Mm -hmm. It has sentimental value. And we've never seen it. And we're going to watch it together for 25 years together, John. It sounds like something that should be done in private and not on a public podcast. It's a movie about a a Frankenhooker chase. It's (laughs) perfect for this this podcast. I've actually, I worked in a lot of video stores and uh, I've seen that box tons of times. See? And I never watched that thing. I've watched clips of it. It's pretty impressive. I am pretty curious about Frankenhooker, actually. So I think I think we're gonna watch Frankenhooker. <laughs> yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, awesome. See Chase. See what happens when you try to stand in the way of love. Ah, <laughs> uh, I was hoping. Yeah, because you, you were. counting counting tonight. Blake's got two picks left. I've only got one. Right. So now we're back down to a, a coin flip. Yeah. (laughs) Ah. Well, we're going to know soon because it's my pick after this. And if it don't happen, then there's only one option left. Yeah. And I'm fine with it. As long as I get this one in. (laughs) 
No, but I have I have seriously been wanting to see Frank and Hooker for a while. Is it on? Nice. Um, I'm glad you saw the box. I'm glad you know what I'm talking. about. Oh yeah. Do you know uh, which? Is it on Amazon? It's on YouTube. Wow. Oh, come on. Shit. John, come on. <laughs> you know, every time we watch a YouTube video, it's impossible. No, it's not. <laughs> it's the quality video. Yeah. It, is it even the actual movie? I have yes, to actually it, ask this. It is. I've watched. I've watched a good chunk of it. Look, man. No, I'm not saying it because he'll he'll hit the button on me. I'm not even gonna make the joke. <laughs> So the entire, because like it seems like the kind of thing that would violate YouTube's, uh, you it's know, not terms of service. It's I'm I'm telling you, it's on there, because I skimmed through it to to see certain parts. It's it's in it's there in all its glory. Do the subtitles work? I didn't check the subtitles. God damn it! I hate doing YouTube movies. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up and end the show, Chase. God damn it! <laughs> I need this to be official. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one person that can make it official here. Uh, yeah, let's. Well, yeah, yes, we're going. All right, good. Is on. Okay. Good. Well. By the way, I got divorced last week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! All right. So I'd like to thank everybody that's been listening. If you can drop us a review on iTunes, we would very much appreciate that. You can find us online at facebook.com slash garbage theater and on Instagram at garbage underscore theater. Uh, if you have a movie pick that you'd like to send to us, do it. We'll watch it. It'll be bad. Um, you can shoot that to us on any of our social channels or you can email us directly at garbage theater podcast at gmail.com. <sighs> I knew it was going to happen to me. <laughs> well, you deserve it. If you anybody deserve deserves it. it, it's you. you if anyone deserves it, anyone deserves it. I mean, okay, let's let's be fair. In the four years that we've done the special weapons, the three times we've used it, it's all been on John. <laughs> Two of them have been from me. <laughs> you deserve it. So, uh, I was planning on lowballing my final pick anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna watch Home Alone 2. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I got a request for my next pick, so yeah. It's it's not like I'm emotionally attached to it. I just got yeah. a request for it. So I'm good. Uh unless I could come up with a a, a better goddamn sob story. <laughs> it's not a sob story, it's a beautiful <laughs> love story. I don't care about his story. I, I genuinely want to see Frank and Hooker. <laughs> well, fuck me, right? <laughs> Rehearse that speech for an hour before we started recording. <laughs> oh my god. No, nah, it'd right. be nice. It'd be nice to get the wives involved, like instead of just uh, them hating everything that I do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't promise that's going to change. <laughs> we'll try. Yeah. All right. So that's a wrap on The Warrior and the Sorceress. Tune in next time when we watch Frankenhooker. We'll see you then, folks. <laughs> Thank you.